Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Gewitz, former chair of the American Heart Association's Council on Cardiovascular Disease in the Young and also former chair of the Committee on Rheumatic Fever, Endocarditis, and Kawasaki Disease. And we're here today to announce the publication of uh, the first major revision of the Jones Criteria for the Diagnosis of Acute Rheumatic Fever since 1992. It will be uh, released today and uh, available for review in detail on the website listed on this link. The paper has been a long time in coming and was the work of a uh, writing group, which I had the opportunity to chair, made up of people from around the world with expertise in rheumatic fever, pediatric infectious diseases, and pediatric cardiology, as well as participation from colleagues in the adult cardiology and adult infectious disease worlds as well. Rheumatic fever remains a serious problem across the world, even though in the United States the incidence has declined appreciably over the last several decades. But as part of the global mission for the American Heart Association, and in order to keep American practitioners as well as practitioners in other countries up to speed with regard to new developments in technology and diagnosis, we embarked upon this literature review, clinical review, and epidemiologic review in order to come up with these revised Jones criteria. The Jones criteria have been in existence for well over 50 years and have really been the fundamental resource for the diagnosis of acute rheumatic fever for practitioners around the world. But in light of recent technological changes, particularly the last two decades or more now, of advances in echocardiography, both in technology and worldwide availability, we needed to update the criteria to include the opportunity for echocardiographic diagnosis of cardiac involvement in acute rheumatic fever to be part of the criteria. In addition, we looked seriously at whether or not the incidents around the world would have an impact on the sensitivity of the Jones criteria for diagnosis. And so our new formulation includes a look at how to interpret the Jones criteria based upon the background incidence and prevalence of acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease within a given population. This is a new departure and one which we hope will bring the Jones criteria more in line with the criteria which have been developed around the world in countries where rheumatic fever and acute rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease are really much more prevalent than in developed countries. We hope to help the practitioners with increased sensitivity and the availability of new diagnostic methodologies, as well as new understanding of the biology of the streptococcal cause of acute rheumatic fever. And these new criteria are aimed at trying to assist practitioners with their very important work in the patient population out in the field. We hope that in concert with the screening programs that are currently going on around the world, many of which are sponsored by the American Heart Association, the development and dissemination of the revised Jones criteria will really assist practitioners, number one, in diagnosing children who are susceptible to rheumatic fever with the illness and thereby introducing more effective treatment regimens to prevent long-term sequelae known as rheumatic heart disease, which still is a major cause of morbidity and mortality around the world. So these uh, new criteria really are part of the overall mission of the American Heart Association to improve the cardiovascular health of people not only in the United States, but around the world.